Hello again. We're going to be graphing linear equations again, but we're going to be doing two special types of linear equations that don't really require any plotting whatsoever. In fact, they're very difficult for students unless they memorize them. That's usually the only way to do it. And it doesn't take more than 30 seconds to memorize it. But when students see it, they become flustered. Now, what we were doing before was we were solving for y, and we were substituting an x value in into the table, and we were figuring out, okay, if we substitute a 2, you know, the y is 4, we're going to plot it, and we're going to graph it, and we're going to see if it's discrete or continuous, and then he's going to make me do domain and range, which is absolutely boring, blah, 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 blah. Well, before we get to the really cool stuff about graphing, which involves no tables whatsoever, I can't wait, because I don't like writing tables if I don't have to write tables. We're going to talk about two special types of graphs. Now, most of the linear graphs that we do are going to be slanted. And by slanted, I mean, oh, you know, they're going to be like this, you know, slanted upwards, or they're going to be slanted downwards. You know, and they're going to vary. You know, it's going to be like somebody's kind of twisting it a little bit, but it's never going to be perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical. That's not true. There are perfectly vertical graphs that are linear, and there are perfectly horizontal graphs that are linear. And those two graphs only come in these two cases, where x equals a and y equals b. And x equals a, by a and b I mean a number, like x equals 5, x equals negative 5, x equals 0, y equals 3, y equals negative 3, y equals 0. Uh, let me show you, though, just to put a little bit of confusion on and really. One of the best ways to do it is by memorizing. I mean, I, I remember doing this, and I'm pretty proficient in math, and that's not bragging. I just, you know, you don't teach math without becoming proficient in it. But when I first learned this, I didn't really understand what was going on, but this was many, many, many years ago, so I just memorized it. And then as my math skills got better, I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But if you tried to explaining it to me without just showing me how it was done, then I wasn't going to do it. That's why I, I always have a lot of students say, just show me how it's done. And that kind of makes sense, you know, it's, it's nice to understand, but at the same time, you know, uh, you, you can understand everything, but if you're not doing the problems right and you get a poor grade on the test, you know, that doesn't feel good either. So it's a combination of understanding, but also just being able to do the problem that you have to do right. So with that said, x equals a, and I'll show you a little picture of what it looks like, is a perfectly vertical graph. Well, not that's perfectly vertical is something else. And y equals b or y equals some number is a perfectly horizontal graph. Now, well, that's fantastic. Show me some examples, and then I'll be able to do it. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. We'll see how you do. We're going to start with, uh, let's start with the x, because x comes before y. Let's use x equals 2. I want to graph that. You can't make a table, and the reason why you can't make a table is like, well, I'm going to make a table of x and y values, and I'm going to make five different ones, and when I substitute in two, my y is going to, and when I, how's that going to help? You substitute in two for x, two equals two, where is y? It's not there. So, something for you to think about. So, here's the way to think about it, though, so it does make sense. X is always going to be 2. That's the whole point. That's the equation. X is always 2. No matter where you go on this graph system, this Cartesian plane, or this XY point system, X will always be 2 in this particular equation. Because I'm asking you, you know, graph X equals 2. Let's graph X equals 2. Okay, where is X equals 2 at? Well, let's start at the origin. X is 2 there. This is the tricky part, though. Where else is X equal to 2? And this is a very tricky question. It's like that, you know, if a tree, you know, what's the sound of one hand clapping? You know, see, that's not actually that tricky. Where else is X equals 2? Mm, well, X is 2 here, but Y is 1. I don't care. I didn't say where Y was. I just asked you where X was 2. Well, okay, X is 2 here. Where else is x equals 2? Uh, it's right here, here. It's everywhere right here. 
whenever you see x equals a number, whatever that number is, just plot that point there. And you know, you can make more dots if you want to, or points, but all you really got to do is just create a vertical line. Congratulations, you just graphed x equals 2. That's all it took. You just go 2 on the x-axis and you make a vertical line. That's all there is to it. That's it. I mean, there's really nothing more than that. And I guess the reason why, if you want the reason, is since x is always going to be 2, you're always going to plot, you're going to graph, uh, excuse me, a line, and x is always going to be 2. It's going to be 2 here. I mean, I don't know the y value is going to be all the way down there, but x is still going to be 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, so on. Continuing along, graph x equals negative 2. Well, I'm going to go negative 2 on the x. Is it a vertical or a horizontal line? It's a vertical. No need to explain any more than that. Here's a question that students ask me, and I get a little annoyed. Not at the students, not at the question, but because I have to actually do this. But it is essential. Okay, what does x equals 0 look like? Glad you asked. Here's 0 on the x. It's just a graph. It goes up and down. It actually is the y-axis, which actually seems counterproductive. And I remember when I first did that, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. But I kind of just swallowed it down and said, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, theoretically that works, theoretically that works, theoretically that works. x is always going to be 0 right there. So that said, that's x equals 2. Let's do y equals a number, and let's do something more fun with some more pizzazz. y equals 5. Well, where's 5 on the y-axis? Same type of question. When is y 5? Not y 5, y 5. Well, y is 5 right there. It's also right there. But the x, I didn't ask you what the x value was. I just asked you, when is y 5? Okay, right there, and so on and so forth. That's the graph for y equals 5. Continuing along with my very unoriginal examples, because I just use the same number over again, y equals negative 5. y equals 0. It's just the x-axis. Pretty interesting. What we're going to be doing now is solving graphs in standard form. We're going to figure out slope. We're going to figure out slope-intercept form, etc. But we're going to stop using tables. And this is a great introduction because these are the first two graphs you should know without any tables. y equals a number, x equals a number. Of course, you should know how to plot in tables properly because when you do more difficult functions, um, since you practice linear functions so often, you can figure out how to graph without tables. But the more difficult an equation is, if it's a y equals x squared or y equals the square root of x or y equals uh, log base 10 of x, these become more difficult without a table. So it's always good to learn how to use a table properly. But when you graduate from linear functions, all you really have to do is use the two methods, uh, standard form and slope intercept, which we will be covering. Until then, though, have a great day. Goodbye.